Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. Stu Rich and Mike Wood here to take you through the big card at Rose Hill Gardens this year, weekend. Yes, we're away from Royal Randwick. Of course, we'll be running our mini races. We'll get those races started. Plenty of value and, of course, best bets coming your way with our exotics later in the show. And, Mike, just when you thought the carnival might be over, up pops a $7.5 million race, the Golden Eagle. How good is this going to be? I am so excited. Again, I'm excited every week. This is the grand finale for the Sydney Spring Carnival. Got my golden tie on everything. <laughs> You've done well. It's such a great race. They couldn't be any happier with the field this year. They've got two-year-old features, three-year-old features. Why not have a four-year-old feature? We could have five-year-old, six-year-old features in the future. Why don't we have a veteran series? I love the idea of older horses going around in a special feature race. Yeah, so much they can do. And great initiative there to race in New South Wales so on a great day. And, Mike, I guess so much of the form coming through this race, plenty of qu uh, queries as well. I mean, we've got 1,500 metres. It is Rose Hill Gardens. We've got that Fasica form line as well. Mike, so many good things to look at. And, of course, all this Everest form. Which way are we going to go there? Yeah, the key factors will be so interesting later on. It's the perfect distance, isn't it? The 1,500 metres gets those Everest horses, gets the Group 1 feature horses as well. Very close on Saturday. All right, let's get stuck into all the racing now, Mike. And, of course, the weather in Sydney this weekend. Well, it's been sun, 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 so we're on a good track. Yeah, the rail's true. Haven't raced there for a few weeks. Should be a good, dry track. Very firm. Mid-30s, I think, at Parramatta on Saturday. Hopefully, it's a fair bite. Could be a bit near pace if it really firms up. All right, it's going to be a warm one out there. We know that, Mike. And, look, plenty of good racing on the card, as we've said. Of course, the Golden Eagle's going to be in there, mate. But what about a few other races on the day to have a look at? Let's keep it simple. I don't like some of the early races. They're okay. quite tricky so we're not going to do those early races. We'll have some best bets later on, but we'll keep it pretty simple. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, all including right. all the features, including the Golden Eagle, obviously. And finishing off race nine, the special of the day has been very well back during the week, Stu. All right, so five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll just uh, be nice and quiet for the first four races there. Keep it simple. <laughs> all right, let's get stuck into it now. The very first race is the Tab Handicap. It is race five on the card, 1,200 metres, a benchmark 78 for the Phillies and Mares. Three last start winners engaged in the race and some real progressive types here. We've got Miss Invincible, the favourite, $4 into $3.60. We'll go forward and just has to run the 1,200 here. We've got Dance Hall Girl. $3.70, another well-supported. Swamp the final 200 metres in the TV, fresh and back to the 1,200. Listoon Varner up the top, $5. Chase World to win latest, under 61 kilos. We've got Segalas there, $6.50. Very genuine mare, one last two after racing wide at Kensington. And, of course, Gen Rules rounding out those under $10 at $7.50, resuming some Multaja form fresh there, from her, Mike, but Miss Invincible, Dance Hall Girl, they're the two favourites here. Yeah, don't like Miss Invincible to 1,200 metres. We'll see the key factors soon and see what we make of her. Let's have a look at Dance Hall Girl, very lightly raced, very progressive, went to a benchmark 70, led all the way over 1,200 metres, beats Miss Scorcher. There's some good, strong form in behind her. She went to 1,400 metres next start and she knocked up the last 200 metres. She's back in distance on Saturday. Can she win again, Stu? I think maybe. Timmy Martin, horse, going forward. We'll see if all the money comes. Yeah, watch the market, I reckon, with that trainer. Let's have a look at one. And a bit more odds here, Mike. You found one here, Everly. We're going back to Wyong, 10th of October. Joe Pride trained. I'll tell you what, Mike, this was a Robbie Dolan peach on the rails early, got him off and absolutely ran on best down the middle. Yeah, Joey Pride can improve a sprinting mare, can't you? Remember Pecans? We were going to buy into that horse and she went on to win all these group races. Why did I bring it up? But this horse, Everly, two starts for Joey Pride, two wins, absolutely flying. The form looks only average. But if you keep going through it, the form behind it is quite strong, quite surprising. All right, well, that's why we've got to look at these replays, Mike. Let's get race five underway. Keep your eyes up the top right as we run our mini race here for the Tab Handicap. And plenty here with the form. Yeah, plenty with form. Dance Hall Girl knocked up last start, like we said. But Everly has got surprisingly good form, Stu. OK, the Phillies and Mares. Who's got all the progression for the first key factor? Looking for horses upside. Dance Hall Girl has to bounce off that last run. She's only a lightly raced horse, we think. Ballistica, she can improve as well. She was quite green in the straight last start. OK, so we've got one of the favourites here, but plenty of value. Value levelling up here, Mike. How does the distance help us? It's almost the ones that haven't got the gold <laughs> is the most important here. Mitzi Invincible up to 1,200 metres of risk. Liz Dunvana back to 1,200 metres of risk. And Ballistica, she only just sees out the 12, we think. All right, Dancehall Girl, Segalas and Everly all on top here, Mike. But this looks like a pretty close race. What about the good track? Oh, uh, weren't too sure. The <laughs> favourites should be OK. Miss Invincible, Dancehall Girl should like it. Generals, not so sure. Absolutely no gold there, Mike. But position in run, this might help one of them just over the line. Yeah, a lot of our mates love backing on-pace horses at this track. I mean, it's Invincible, Dance or Girl. They're drawn so perfectly, but Everly, 
will be camped just behind with Robbie, Do Robbie Dolan on. OK, so Everly levels up there with Dance Hall Girl out in front. So we might have a little bit of value to play with here in race number five, but the favourites well supported also. Let's have a look now at all our ratings. Mike, we've got one favourite there, $3.70. And Everly, we saw the replay. That was good. In form, Robbie Dolan, $14. A little bit of a set on Miss Invincible from the start, you've said. Yeah, I reckon she'll knock up the last 50, 100 metres. Dance Hall Girl, I'm absolutely terrified of her. Watch the market late for her. Watch the yard as well. Everly, each way all day. The best each way player of the day, we think. All right, some strong confidence there in race number five with Everly each way. Let's have a look now at race number six. It is the Rose Hill Gold Cup over the 2,000 metres. And I'll tell you what, Mike, you've always got to take note when Aidan O'Brien brings one here. We've got Antis having his first run in Australia. It is the $4 favourite, the Irish import. The internationals are pretty much just on fire here in Australia at the moment. There's Tally, $4.40 in behind. Going great guns this preparation after, of course, pushing pushing Happy Clapper all the way in the Craven Plate. Dealmaker, $5.50. Got his second win then. Almost another. Out to the 2,000 here. Chapada, $6.50. 1,400, 1,600. Out to the 2,000. And who could forget that third of the autumn sun here in the Rose Hill Guineas? Yeah, that was a great run, wasn't it? Some good form lines, some deep form lines in this new race. Let's have a look at a couple of them, starting with probably the best form line in the race, isn't it? Happy Clapper all the way. Leads. You're on in this day, Stu, so you'll enjoy this replay. He just hung on. But Tally... He's been going pretty well this prep and he proved he is going really well with this very close second shoot. Well, you're going to have to be going well to keep a horse like Happy Clappy Clapper right within your sights. And look, that's exactly what Tally did here, Mike. The extra, well, sticking at the 2,000 metres here can only be good. Yeah, handles a big weight. He's handled big weights before. Life less ordinary on the inside, no mugs. Sam it out, no mugs. Won some big races as well. So it should be a strong form line on Saturday. Yeah, no love there for life less ordinary. Let's have a look here now. Oh, we're going back to this great race, the Group 1 Rose Hill Guineas, Mike. Look, the Autumn Sun and Arrogant, they stage this two-horse war down the straight. But we're looking at Chapada here in the purple, just getting some clear galloping room here, Mike, and there were some pretty good margins. Yeah, he's a little bit in and he's a little bit out, this galloper, though, isn't he, Chapada? He's definitely yes. got talent. And after this particular run where he comes third to the Autumn Sun, you think, wow, he's a big boom horse. He's going to win a Group 1 soon. Mm -hmm. I think he was favourite in the derby. He was just OK midfield. So he can do it on his, on his best but how he's going to turn up on Saturday. Yeah, definitely had that vibe about a Chapada. Well, hopefully the key factors can help us sort out this race. 2,000 metres, the Rose Hill Gold Cup, Mike. Who's coming in with all the form? Tally, we just said it strong. Form lines through Happy Clapper. Light him up. All right, so it's Tally. As we get this race started, at the top right-hand side of the screen, first one, as always, Mike, progression. We're wondering about Chapada, but third up gives us confidence. Two preps ago, he won by a big margin. Last prep, that was the run we just looked at. Emperor's Way, he can improve third up too. OK, so Tally out in front as we hit the two. 2,000 metres. Looking for ones that like the 2,000 metres. Chapada, Emperor's Way, Morton's Fork should all love it. Lejuge, another dollar as well. Antilles, back in distance, just OK. OK, so Antilles, a couple of lengths to make up here, Mike. Plenty of gold there for a few at prices as well. What about the dry, hard track? How does that suit the Irish? We're not playing it too much. We think it's a negative. I think it's a red bar if we had one yep. for Antilles. Away for, from the synthetic track is a negative for the import. OK, so it's Tally, Chapada, Emperor's Way, Morton's Fork, Mike. Position in run. Who does this help? Just when you think it's a close <laughs> race, these two strong on paces lob into the perfect spot. Tally and Chapada get the right position in run, we think. Look, we don't always just show the two replays that they come out on top in the key factors, Mike, but plenty of gold there to we finish time, things mate. off. We did that time. Let's see if they'll figure in the bets. I know Tally's just going so, so well here. Of course, well supported as well. One of the favourites, $4.40. Chapada right there as well, Mike. Yeah, you're right. A lot of questions on this horse. Is it really one of those winners? Let's see on Saturday. Emperor's Way, pretty good value there. And Morton's Fork as well. But look, no love for the Irish here. No love for the Irish away from the synthetic track. Dealmaker up to 2,000 metres. Just want to see him. Another stable likes him. Little Lord Mayor could do something from the box seat. Yep. But we like the top four runners. So either of those four runners could be a bet. We'll think Chapada will give him one more chance third up. <laughs> Emperor's Way is the right odds, but if you like Tally, no knock at all. All right, let's stick with Chapada there in the Rose Hill Gold Cup, 2,000 metres. There's a look at two races on Golden Eagle Day. Stick around after the break. We've got the big feature coming up. Back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. How about the feature of the day at Rose Hill Garden? Seven and a half million dollars, over 1,500 metres. The new race for the four-year-olds. 
Wow, you'd love to own one of these, wouldn't you? Running for the money, $750,000, of course, going to charity in the race. An Arcadia Queen, Mike, absolutely belted in the betting since the barrier draw. Just not quick enough for him in the Everest, but 1500 much more her go. Look at the money here. Into the $3.10. Colding, $5. The Epsom winner, freshened for this. Tiakau Shark, form lines. We know how that ended up in the Cox Plate. Brutal, $5.50. The Doncaster Mile winner, drawing the outside here for Tommy Berry. Classique legend. Look at this little drift. Out to $7.50. Very unlucky in the Everest. McAvoy jumps on. We'll need a little bit of luck from the one, the 1500, the query, and the inevitable. What a horse. What a great little Tassie. $10. We know that'll be really well supported. And of course, that ties in the Fasica form lines there, Mike. But Arcadia Queen has been the one the punters want for the Golden Eagle. Yeah, we'll look at three replays. This is the biggest race on Saturday, one of the biggest races of the year. So excited about this four year old race. Let's start with the obvious lead in the Silver Eagle, over 1,300 metres of ramic. So many of these horses come through this race into Saturday. Some great runs in this race. A margin between first, second and third, which is a big form indicator for Saturday. The inevitable so strong for Seeker. Only second up, remember. She was strong as well. Mizzy not too far away in third. Military zone, a bit of a hidden run. She, he wasn't too bad in fifth, Stu. Yeah, well, look, this is going to be the, the lead-up for the years to come, isn't it? The Silver Eagle and, Mike, these two in a bit of a class above out in front here, Mike. Look, what about these margins? A couple of links back to Mizzy and, of course, military zone. Got to love the margin to third and got to love the fact that Fasika was only second up and she goes to 1,500 metres for the first time in her career. All right, let's have a look now at the Everest. No, please, what a no, race it was. It. Yeah, you might want to look away, mate. You were on Kosleek Legend, as a lot of us were, but we're looking at Arcadia Queen too here, Mike. Look, had excuses. Obviously, Kosleek Legend had excuses. What did you take from this? We took a big play, or I took a big play because of the firm track. You look at his big, beautiful action, his big, beautiful physique, in the mounting yard, he is simply a dry tracker. He yep. probably should have Ugh. won second, if not won the Everest this day. Arcadia Queen, look, she kept on late, yeah, but she has to improve a few lengths, obviously, to beat Classic Legend on Saturday. Well, you think she improved out to the 1500. Let's lack the, look at a third replay here, Mike. We've got to because it is the Epsom quality form race. Colding up on pace this day, and Tiakau Shark making the run down the outside, and of course, this ended up with a place in the Cox Plate. Yeah, great form lines, big gap again. This is an even bigger gap to third, isn't it? Tiaku Shark, Cox Plate form. Did look, did Colding win this, or did Bossy win this? Probably well, both. both yeah. You're on this horse as well. You're having a great run, Stu. He loves 1,500 metres as well. He loves a dry track as well, and he's right in this race on Saturday. Look, that is a great replay to look at, and a couple of good margins there from a few of those, so let's strong see form. how it all Very strong ends up here in the race, Mike, because let's get it started. It is the Golden Eagle. What a race it is, but how are you going to rate this form? Yeah, well, there's some handicap form coming into this race. Classique Legend just about should have won the best okay, sprint yep. race in the world, so why don't we light him up, Stu? All right, why not? He's the one they've got to catch, and who's got progression here? Well, there's a lot of horses with upside. <laughs> Arcadia Queen, third up. You can tell from the money she's definitely improving. Yep. The Wallace Stable must be confident. Brutal, third up. He's improving the yard all the time. Yeah, big tick from Bob Peters to keep her in training as well. The favourite, Mike. Of course, the distance. This is the big query, the yeah, 1500. the same two horses. Arcadia Queen should absolutely yep. love the 15. Brutal should love the 15 as well. But really like a firm track. And Vasika, she's never been to 15 before, but she's bred from so you think. You think she'll love it too. All right, that is an absolutely massive kicker for the favourite there, Mike. Hits the front with a couple to go. What about the good track? I know she won on a good four at Rose Hill, but a really hard deck at Rose yep. Hill on Saturday. Is it a risk for the West Australian? Colding, he should be fine. Classique legend, we talked about him before. He sh he's love, should love a firm track. OK, so it's the two Everest horses, Classique legend and Arcadia Queen, with their necks out in front in the Golden Eagle and positioning run. Oh, how good is this? A lot of gold. Yeah, keeping it pretty <laughs> simple. For Seeker, she should be OK, but brutal. He will need a lot of luck to slot in and hope for a rolling tempo. All right, so it's Arcadia Queen and Classique Legend one length ahead of Colding there, Mike. Look, I mean, look, punters have really got to weigh this up, don't they? They've got some Everest form to look at. Of course, the Silver Eagle form. We've got Everest form. What a race it is. Which way are we going to play? <laughs> Let's have a look now for all the ratings and the odds for the Golden Eagle this weekend, Mike. And look, Arcadia Queen, we obviously got the massive kicker there, Mike, but the price, it just went from the barrier draw. What was it 480 into that sort of 293, 10 mark? And well, Classique, it's the one that went out the gate. Yeah, there's lots of depth in this form, so we think we're pretty confident. The one big question is Classique Legend to 1,500 metres. Another big question is, can Arcadia Queen bounce back? Yes. But Classique Legend, all he has to do is repeat that run and he will win on Saturday. And for Seeker, she should love the 1,500 metres at odds. Yeah, great value there. Over $20, I think, for Seeker. But Classic Legend there for us in the Golden Eagle. Let's have a look now at the next race. It is race number eight on the card, the Red Zill Stakes. 
over the 1300 metres and well more Everest form lining up here Mike. We've got Piarata $2.80 not very far away in that race and well let's face it form around all the best sprinters in the land. Drawing 12 here though so there's the query. Trekking $4.20 what a run it was in the Everest being the last one to qualify up to the 1300 metres a tick from me. Deprive $6.50 well isn't this horse flying. Swamp them in the Sydney Stakes really needs to bring that form to having its first go Rose Hill. Champagne Cuddles we know this horse is just going to be there Mike. Super genuine just missing in the Sydney Stakes and of course we'll stick with that Sydney Stakes form. Home of the Brave leading it. Had his chance. Who's going to be leading this one though? Well, I'm not sure. The tempo could be on and off. Home of the Brave will be leading we think but we'll have a look. Let's have a look at the Everest again. Why not? Because this race <laughs> will be gone soon so we can keep watching replays while it's recent. There's two big runs coming to this race on Saturday. Trekking down the outside. Pirata up the inside. Look who's held up a little bit Pirata so we're rating these runs the same. But the thing you have to say about trekking is whatever you throw at him, he just keeps lifting late, doesn't he? He sure does. Look, he's just that sort of horse. And I mean, look, are a lot of people going to be looking for excuses here in the Everest from a few of these runners? Yeah, I think, but I think these two runs are simply the best two runs coming to this race on Saturday. And trekking and Pierrata should both love the 1300 metres. OK, well, let's have a look now at the Sydney Stakes. And what a race this was. There's Deprive the right out the back. He's going to make his run around the field and end up winning, Mike. But so many of these horses we know so well. Champagne Cuddles just loves to fight. We've got Home of the Brave on pace here and of course Fiesta really racing home well here. There are so many good runs to look at you just nailed the shoot to Prive look coming from Ramick to Rose Hill we think he'll be okay he's never been there before maybe he's just a big track horse Champagne Cuddles maybe prefers Ramick home of the brave maybe a wet track he needed Fiesta was yep. good first up redouble a bit of a hidden run down Absolutely. in the weights and easy Eddie was three wide no cover but will he handle the 1,300 metres? I think I got them all out, Stuart. All right, yeah, there's enough to Just. look at in there. Well, that's what we've got to do, mate. Look at all of these replays to get the race started. Let's have a look now, Mike. We're going to get into the key factors, but, of course, the form, it's all coming from the Everest. Doesn't take a rocket scientist. <laughs> Pirata tracking Everest form. Light them up. Which simply means they're the two they're going to have to catch, Mike. Obviously, some progression here from a few of the others. Can though. you help me with Leromain? I've got no <laughs> idea what he's going to do on Saturday, so we've given him a few lengths. Kappa Jack can definitely improve. He was a bit scratchy in the yard first up. OK, Leromain. Well, he knows a good horse on his day. Let's see what he can do, Mike. Of course, the distance. It's ominous, isn't it? The favourites love 1,300 metres. Well, that's why they've got gold. And, of course, Deprive there as well with a bit of gold, Mike. But, well, we've got a good track. Who's that going to yeah, see? Yeah, looking for dry track Rose Hill horses. It was hard to find the right horse, but Kappa Jack's had three starts on a dry Rose Hill and won three times. Had to light him up. All right, look, there's gold down the bottom, Mike, but they're not making too many inroads here on the Everest horses, but who gets a good position in run for the 1,300? Yeah, you kind of want to jump into the favourites, but Pirata's drawn wide and Trekking gets back. Yeah. Lots of other runners will get a better position run, we think, on Saturday. Two clear form lines in this race, Mike. It's the Everest and the Sydney Stakes. We've got the Everest coming out on top there in the key Pretty factors. Simple. But <laughs> let's have a look now to see where we're going to play because, look, let's face it, odds do tell the story here, Mike. $2.80, $4.20. That's the Everest form. And there is all the Sydney Stakes form in behind. So which way are we going to go? It's a pretty simple game of pick your favourite Everest <laughs> runner and it then is, pick your favourite Sydney Stakes <laughs> runner. I think I'm going to go trekking. I think the odds are just a bit better, but I could have gone either way. Redouble, maybe just a place, because he doesn't win in this grade very often, but he's drawn very well and he will put a sneaky run in on Saturday. And some pretty good odds, Redouble, as Massive well. Massive odds. All right, so it's trekking there for us in race number eight. And, of course, rounding out the day, we are race number nine, late in the day, Golden Eagle Day, 1,300 metres. It's a benchmark 78. And here is another horse. The punters have absolutely crunched. $5 into $2.80 already on Thursday. Stuck wide and loomed to win fresh. A lot of dollars there. Juventus, $4.80. A bit slowish out in the Ranio race a few weeks back. We got Charatera there, $7. Resuming, ran on in a trial. Took a fast one in Kylie's to beat him fresh last preparation. Done Brody Power, $8.50 in, in good form, coming off a Warwick Farm win. Spring Charlie there at the top of the weights at $9, beating Grimoire fresh, and there is Grimoire. $10, who's since gone on, a little unlucky at Randwick, the later start, Mike. But this is one the punters have absolutely come for, and we're about to see why. Let's have a look at one replay. We used up three replays in the Golden Eagle, so we only need one. We think 1,200 metres first up. There was a little bit of money and some stable confidence. Yep. They wouldn't have been so confident when he came out four wide, no cover, no. but the form lines give them confidence for Saturday. Signore Fox, Rillamin Ruby, 
some good form from the Kosciuszko as well. He'll be so, so hard to beat on Saturday with the claim as well, Stu. Yeah, look, Brock Ryan won't be out that far. Look, from gate number five, looks to get a really good run on Saturday, Mike. And look, I guess fresh, you're looking at this just thinking how well to stick on. Fights so hard, 1,400 metres, fine. All right, one replay we need to look at, and that's the one that punters have come for. <laughs> so let's, will be. <laughs> let's have a look now at all the ratings. And of course, the key fact is to kick the race off. Race number nine, hopefully we're all well in front by race number nine. Let's see how fast we can go. Outrageous, <laughs> light him up for four. OK, he's the one they've got, to they've got to catch, Mike. What about progression? A bit risky second up. He over a second up last prep. Some others can improve, including Shara Terra for the Snowden Stable. OK, so no gold for the favourite. What about this distance, sir? Dumb Brody Power loves... 1,200 metres with strong tempo. She'll love 1,300 metres too. OK, they've still got a few lengths to make up here. You are going quickly through them, Mike. What about the good track? <laughs> Grimoire, big, strong, solid. Never been to Rose Hill before, but we think you'll like it. OK, we've said outrageous. Gets barrier five, so it probably gets a good position run. Brock Ryan, let him off the leash. Last race of the day, rock hard track. You can't get it wrong, can you, Brock? Oh, mate, well, he just went a few lengths in front. He has absolutely darted away. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen a win like that on the key factors for a while, Mike. I'm pretty, last sure, race of the day too. I'm pretty sure we know where this is going to end up. It looks like it's going to be a favourite in the last. Let's see if we see it any other different, Mike. Look at that, screaming across the page. Did you get the $5? I think that's what the punters want to know. I have just moved into my new house and I was out the back building some outdoor <laughs> furniture when the 5 bucks popped up. Then I saw the four bucks and I was too slow and got third, three bucks, but we still think he's a bet. He just wins by two or three lengths, goes on pace, fights hard. He's, he's too classy for these on Saturday. All right, so if you're down and out, outrageous is surely a great get out on Saturday, Rose Hill Gardens, race number nine. There's a look at five big races on Golden Eagle Day, but we've got plenty more to come, including our feature multis after the break. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. Well, what a day it's going to be out there at Rose Hill Gardens on Golden Eagle Day, Mike. We've taken five, six, seven, eight, nine for the features. What about the rest of the races, mate? One to four. Come on, we need some winners there. I need some cash for Flemington, and I'm not sure about these early races, so I'm betting small, especially the first three. Rule the world, first up, maybe watch the mark in the yard. Five yep. bucks, Waterhouse, Atlantic King, drawn wide, but a very good horse. Asterius, geez, he was good first up, but Absolutely. he gets back in a small yep. field. Bow Ideal, don't mind him. He seems to be progressing for the good offense table at 420. Then the ones we talked about, Everly, the best each way play of the day. Shapata third up at 650. Classique, legend 750. We'll take that with Everest form. More Everest form from Trekking and Outrageous, the best play of the day to finish off the day at Rose Hill Gardens. All right, a favourite in the last, but plenty of value across the page there, Mike. And, well, if there's value on the day, surely the $100 hot seat's where the guys of the punters out there on Saturday have really got to stick their necks out and back a few of these. Yeah, it's a big, long day, so we just <laughs> want to keep going on Saturday. So we've got 20 bucks across the five races. All right, to that's nice. Interested. I like that. $10 each way, Everly, $14. Bucks. $20 bundle. Bet we're leaving out the favourite. Shapato, Emperor's Way, and Morton's Fork at odds. Classique, Legend, Fasica, just because of the price. Arcadia Queen can win. Yep. Trekking and redouble, and outrageous to finish the day. We wanted to put more on him, but we only had a lobster left, Stu. All right, well, look, you've stuck in the races that we went into nice and early. So there's the $100 nice hot betting. seat. Now, of course, the charity multi, we're going to get home a winner here, Mike. We're doing it for Dementia Australia, as you know, and good luck to them because they have a runner in the Golden Eagle and what a payday that will be for all the charities involved in the race. But let's start off race number eight. We're going to start with Trekking. We had to pick one of these from the Everest, didn't we? And <laughs> Trekking's the one for us. And race nine, well, we've said it all show long and I don't think I've seen a key factor page like that in a while. It absolutely streeted ahead at $2.80. So the 4.2 by the 2.8 gives us a nice little multi there. And in that same race, Mike, let's box up these horses. We've got Pirata, Trekking. Well, we know they're coming from the Everest. Redoubles the one you've signalled out at nice odds and champagne cuddles. Well, this horse has just never, ever let us down, let her let most punters down. And she's a late inclusion, a smart late inclusion from you into that charity trifecta. She, she always runs top three, doesn't she? She does. you just got to put her in there and a bet like that. Well, look, what a day it's going to be out there. Rose Hill Gardens. Make sure you get out there and obviously head to theraceguide.com.au for all your feature profiling. It's going to be a dry, hard, fast track out there and enjoy your day. I'm going to love it. Enjoy Golden Eagle Day.